In the previous video, I built a basic frame for my custom grill. Now it's time I start looking at the headlights and the indicators coming up. As you can see, I've put the frame back onto the truck now. I first want to do the info pieces here. I mean, the process of making a paper template. Let's have a closer look. I've fitted the headlight buckets temporarily to establish my template. This piece of paper I've cut at the moment is just stuck on with some magnets. And then I can trace it from the back side when I take the frame off to get a template for that fill-in piece. I'm planning to move the buckets back so that they won't protrude or stick out as they do at the moment. This is just for now to get the position of my hole. So with the frame off the truck again, I can now trace the back of my paper template. Okay, so the paper template fits quite nicely. Um, maybe you can see I'm planning to recess it a little bit. So if I want to make this from steel, it obviously needs that radius there. Um, I see it's roughly the same as a, this is a piece of four inch pipe, 100 millimeters diameter. I made this jig quite some time ago when I was building bomber seats for the Rogue Rajot. That was actually a fun project. So actually what it all is, is only a piece of four inch, 100 millimeter pipe welded onto the edge of a piece of, um, I beam my head hanging here, but it allows me now to stick this in there. I've got this contraption clamped to my bench, and I can now bend it around there and get a radius. Obviously, there's some spring back, but this should work for what I want to do with that grill. Um, so I can now use this trial piece, test piece, and just see how it's going to fit. Not 100%, but very close. I think it's going to work. It's good enough. So my next step would be to cut this out of one millimeter steel sheet. Okay, I've got my piece of one millimeter plate slightly bigger than what I need. I've got it all lined up. Only one thing left to do now. And that is to do it. First test fit, doesn't look bad at all. That looks good. I can actually describe this now. I need to remember to, when I do here, I can't cut on my line, I, because as it moves into this recess a little bit, that length will get longer, so I'm gonna leave it slightly long there. The only reason why I actually made the paper template is to know where to cut this hole for the light. So I'm scribing this with a little scriber because I want to be able to cut it very exactly. So if I mark it with a sharpie or a cokey or a piece of boiler mat, make a chalk, that's just not accurate enough for me. Okay, you can take it off. I guess I should have done my hole when it was still in place, or the hole, not my hole. <laughs> my hole, the hole for the light. But I can still do it like this. Just line that up perfectly there. And mark the hole for my light.
Okay, time to check it for fit. I'm probably going to have to fiddle with it for a while. Fine tune it here and there. Trying to get it to fit as good as possible. I'm not going to cut the hole for the light yet. Because the heat from the plasma cutter will probably distort the little plate. Especially here in the thin areas. So I'll only cut this hole once I've got this welded in place. A little bit more down there. And right on that corner. <laughs> it's a question of heat and run. Try a bit, try a bit. Take off a bit, retry. Because I really want it to fit as good as I can get it. To be very close now. I'd rather just try, try and take off little bits at a time. Because it's easy to take it off and not so easy to put it back. So if you can really mess with something like this for hours. <laughs> so it depends how much time you want to spend, how good a fit you've got. Or you, fit you want rather. <laughs> If he backlight it like it is now, he could see, for instance, right there, the old bit needs taking off. Okay, it's just tapped into place. That's about as good as it's going to get. So I think I'm just going to live with this. It's good enough. The big joke is I've got to make another one for the other side. Huh. I'm going to recess my plate by about the thickness of this piece of flat bar which is three millimeters or one eighth of an inch to go with my ratty look because <laughs> I'm a kind of a ratty oak I'm just gonna stitch it every about inch and a half 40 millimeters more or less on the front side because I like that look here we go I love it I'm sure it's not everybody's cup of tea, but then us rat rod builders are not trying to pour a cup of tea for everybody, are we? <laughs> Alright, back on the truck one more time to see what it looks like. The hole is just rough. Um, I'm still going to fine tune that. Let's see what it looks like. If we've got a red light in there, something like that. So this needs to obviously sit upright and this is angled. So I'm thinking I might actually do a sort of a Frenching scenario with some plate going in. We'll see where we go. How does it look? That's the thing with these custom things, eh? fitting 20,000 times to check things out and make them work but <laughs> it's part of the game I suppose so these headlight buckets originally mounted like that but with my new grill modification that sits flush with this face it's obviously sticking out and I want this to sit behind this level so I am going to Cut the section out of here, re-weld it back together again, and that will let the buckets move backwards or inwards so it sits behind this level. That's what I mean. I've got the headlight bucket move back far enough so that it sits behind this luckily yeah, I've still got enough clearance in the back only just for the actual seal beams back end so I want to now fill this in with metal this gap here so that the headlight is sort of frenched in I think that's the term they use isn't it so I was digging through my scrap for a long time trying to find something of the right diameter this is the closest I could find it's an old gas cylinder that I've cut the end off for something else 
it's not quite the right diameter it's too big but I'm gonna cut the slice off of it and then I can maybe just close it up a bit to suit my hole I've overlapped my ring if you look carefully you can see it there so I'm now just determining the diameter so currently it's sitting on the outside of those lugs where you adjust the headlights so yes obviously if you want to adjust the headlights with the grill on it needs to be big enough so you can get to those screws but it doesn't look quite so cool so the other option is to make this diameter smaller which would mean that to adjust the headlights you need to take the whole grill off um, but you know how many how, how many times to adjust the headlights um, to take the grill off is only going to be like four or six bolts anyway so maybe I just make it smaller just the headlights when the grill is off and then you're done okay cool so I've, I've decided what my diameter must be um, and I've packed it here now with the off cut piece and clamped it together <coughs> so now I can just tack weld it on the joint it's not going to be perfectly round at the moment I'll have to maneuver and manipulate it <laughs> a little bit so I did pull a little bit on the weld obviously but it's nothing that a panel beating won't sort out Okay, the hole is grinded, <coughs> ground, grinded, <coughs> excuse me, to my mark, so my ring should fit, and it does, awesome, however, because of that angle, the hole will actually not be truly round, it will need to go a little oval, so this thing needs to tilt some, and it can't tilt quite enough so I'm just going to grind a little bit on that side and a little bit on this side so I can get it to tilt more let's give it a try I still think it's not quite enough should actually tilt the other way <laughs> that way it's it needs to tilt enough so that this edge lines up and this edge pretty much touches there you can see here uh, this angle business tilt business i'm talking about so this ring needs to go through that plate at a angle and of course that needs a oval hole right so i've opened up the hole some more a little bit more put the grill back onto the truck, put the headlight in place and that's what we have so far I tell you, unless you have done this kind of thing yourself <laughs> nobody has any idea how much time this kind of shit takes but anyway, we love it, so that's why we do it I suppose so I don't like that opening there and that's why this is gonna go in like so now it's fitting very really well at the moment something like that I'm going to scribe it now and mark it where I can cut it off so that this will not stick out and it will all be flush okay I've cut this piece off it's actually I like this color it's not a bad color gives me some ideas about the paint job for the truck uh, we're gonna have to look at that so here's my piece I've cleaned it up so let's see if it fits there 
There we go. Not half bad, eh? Look at that. And that's pretty much what I have in mind. So what remains is to just weld it up and grind it nicely. What do you think? <laughs> And there's the end result. I think it came out really cool. A lot of effort for a small detail, but then in the details make the difference. <laughs> and the devil is also in the details. Eish, now I gotta still do the other side. Maybe I should build rat bikes. They don't have so many sides. So with the headlights sorted, it's time I start thinking about indicators. I found this <laughs> cheap little indicator, it's an LED. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to recess this as well, so that it's also Frenched in. Um, I think that will look a lot better. Let's get into it. It fits very nicely into a piece of 3 inch tubing, as you can see there. So I'm going to use this piece of tubing and weld it on here somewhere. So the spot where I want to fit it, I'm running into the curve here. So there's a gap there. So I can't have a straight cut. So I need to shape it like I've done on this side already to follow the curve. And then now it's a nice, nice flush fit. And then I can weld it. I've made this backing plate. So that will get welded onto the pipe to provide a landing, obviously, for the indicator unit or the light. So I think I'm going to weld this on first. And then I will scribe, cut my hole, and then I can weld the whole unit on. Jeez, my hands are filthy. Would you guys rather prefer the clinical approach? <laughs> I feel like a surgeon now. I don't know how people can actually work with gloves like this, but I see a lot of the channels do that. I don't know, do you gross out when you see dirty hands? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Okay, so that's what I have, but I'm not sure that I'm happy. Um, I actually fucked up, <laughs> pardon my French. Because why the back face that this light is fitting against is parallel to this and not vertical as it should be. So the little light should actually tilt a little bit more backwards. Probably splitting ball is, and most people won't notice it. But every time I look at the front of this truck, this is going to bug me. Roughly, that's about the vertical line. That's where the back of the light should sit against. Currently, it's sitting against that face. So now, I'm just going to have to change it. So yeah, did all that work for nothing. <laughs> so yeah, looking at it from the back. When I've taken off the grill, you can see it. The headlight is roughly vertical. Okay, it's lying flat now, but you know what I mean. So this one needs to sit parallel to that line. So this young man is going to just have to cut it all off and start from scratch. Well, here it goes. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> All right. Second time around, I think I'm a lot happier. I've recessed it a little bit more so it's in more. I think that'll do. What do you think? 
There's a view from the front. Um, I'm sure some oaks would, would like to maybe have the light in the center. Different strokes for different folks. I prefer that it's got the same gap there and there. A little bit of asymmetry. <laughs> uh, each to his own, eh? Right, so the very last thing to do on this whole grill contraption that's been taking way too much time is so we call them the grill inserts that needs to go there thanks for watching um, if you enjoyed my battle with the grill <laughs> please consider subscribing i'll appreciate it um, and i'm talking of that um, i've got a few had a few guys ask me how would they know if i post another video well it's very simple once you've subscribed there's a little bell button that you can push or click on and then you'll get a notification of the next video and that one will be about the grow inserts see you then have a good one